The rule of 13 tells us that for hydrocarbon, uh, and I mean that literally a molecule that contains only carbon atoms and only hydrogen atoms, for hydrocarbon, the molecular weight of the molecule divided by 13 is almost always equal to the number of carbon atoms in the molecule. This is a really helpful tool that we can use to determine the molecular formula of a molecule using its molecular weight. And this goes uh, really great with mass spec because the mass spec does give us the molecular weight of the molecule. So in this video, I'm going to give you two examples of using the rule of 13 to determine the molecular formula of a molecule from mass spec data. We're going to start with this molecule right here. Now, in order to use the rule of 13, you need to be able to correctly identify the molecular weight from the mass spec. That means that you need to know how to identify the M plus peak. So I'm kind of zooming in here and we can see that this is the M plus peak. Remember the M plus peak is not the highest peak in the molecule or in the spectrum, but it is the highest peak among the peaks that are on the right hand side of the spectrum. So that's this one right here. We need to be able to look at this and determine what mass corresponds to that particular peak. This right here corresponds to a mass of 72. Now there's nothing in this in this spectrum that would give us any reason to believe that there is an atom other than carbon or hydrogen. We know we don't have a nitrogen present because if we did, this would be an odd number like 73 or 71. We also don't have any M plus two peaks out here. So that means that there are no chlorines or bromines. So we have good reason to believe that this molecule is a pure hydrocarbon. And of course the identity of the molecule is um, given to us, but we're pretending like maybe we don't know what it is. So here's how we would use the rule of 13. Since we know that this molecule is just hydrocarbon, we're gonna take the molecular weight, which is 72, and we are going to divide by 13. 72 divided by 13 is 5.54 on my calculator. Now, typically when we do the rule of 13 calculation, the number that we get, of course, it's not gonna be a perfect number. It is gonna be a decimal. And almost always this number right here, we want to round down. So even normally if we were rounding 5.5, we would round that up to six. But usually when we are using the rule of 13, we almost always round down. So we'll, I will talk about situations where we don't want to round down, but even if mathematically it wouldn't make sense to round down, when we're using the rule of 13, we're going to ignore what we know about math and we're going to round down anyways. And so this number, we're going to round down to a five, and this tells us that we have five carbon atoms in the molecule. Now, what, we do, what do we do with that information? Well, we know that the molecular weight of the molecule is 72. We've already decided that the only atoms present in this molecule are carbon and hydrogen. So 72 minus the mass of five carbon atoms is 12. And that is the number of hydrogen atoms that we have in the molecule. And again, this is based on our um, understanding, our belief that this molecule only contains carbon and hydrogen. Um, and again, the reason that we made that decision was because the molecular weight was an even number, not an odd number, and also because there were no M plus two peaks that would tell us that we had chlorine or bromine. C5H2, and that is actually the correct um, formula for 2-methylbutane, which is what this molecule is, so it actually worked. Here's another example down here. Now this one, I chose this example to be a little bit trickier. Remember, we need to start by finding the M plus peaks. We zoom in on this. And again, we're pretending like we don't know what this molecule actually is. We can see if we're looking over here on the right hand side that we have an M plus two peak present. So not only do we get some information about the molecular weight of this molecule, but we also are getting some information about the atoms that are present in this molecule. It looks like our M plus two peak is at 158, which means that our M plus peak is at 156. Because our M plus peak and our M plus two peak are roughly the same height, we know that there is bromine present in the molecule. That is a characteristic of bromine. If our M plus peak and our M plus two peak were about one third, um, relative height, then that would tell us that we had chlorine in the molecule, but because they are the same height, roughly the same height, that tells us that we have bromine. So we have a lot of information about this molecule right here. 
how are we going to use this? Well, first of all, the rule of 13, as I said, it only applies to hydrocarbons, and this molecule has bromine in it. That doesn't mean that we can't use the rule of 13. What it means is that we need to take that molecular weight, 156, and we need to subtract from that the mass of the bromine atom so that all that we have left is the mass of the hydrocarbon portion of the molecule. So the 156, I'm going to make a note here, 156 is due to bromine, it's due to carbon, and it's due to hydrogen. The rule of 13 only works when we only have carbons and hydrogens present, so our first task is to take that 156 and subtract the mass of the bromine. So the mass of bromine, if we look at a periodic table, it's going to tell us that the mass of bromine is 80. That's the average mass of a bromine atom the M plus peak is being generated due to the presence of bromine 79, and the M plus 2 peak is being generated due to the presence of bromine 81. So since I am using the M plus peak, and you all should be using the M plus peak as the molecular weight, when we subtract from that the mass of the bromine, we want to use the mass of bromine 79, because the mass of bromine 79 is the actual bromine atom that is present in this peak 156. We don't want to use 80 because 80 is the average mass of bromine. So we're going to start by taking 156 and we are going to subtract 79, the mass of the bromine, and what is left is going to be the mass of just the hydrocarbon. This is what we would do no matter what atom we had present. So if there was a chlorine, we would be subtracting 35. If we knew we had a nitrogen, we'd be subtracting 14. If our IR told us that we had an oxygen, we'd be subtracting 16. What we're trying to do is get down to just the mass of the hydrocarbons. So this is the mass of the bromine. And that means that 77 is the mass of just the, the hydrocarbon. And 77 is the number that we're going to use to apply the rule of 13. So we're going to go 77 divided by 13. And in my calculator, I get 5.92. So when we're in this situation where we end up with a number that is actually really close to the next highest number, it's kind of tricky to know what should we do. Um, the rule of 13 tells us that we should almost always round that number down. But when it's really, really close to the next number, sometimes we want to end up rounding up instead of down. So should this be five carbons or should this be six carbons? Should we actually round up in this case. Well, in this situation, you know, just kind of take a guess. Should we go five carbons or should we go up to six carbons? You are going to be able to tell from the molecular formula if you've made the wrong choice and you've got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. So, you know, just kind of take a guess. Let's say we're just going to go with five carbon atoms as our choice and let's see what we get. If we go with five carbon atoms, our next job is to figure out how many hydrogen atoms we have. So I'm going to go back to the original 156. I know that I have 79 from the bromine, and I'm going to subtract the mass of 5 carbon atoms, 5 times 12, and this is going to give me the number of hydrogen atoms that are present in the molecule. And that works out to be 17. And that's a lot of hydrogen atoms, especially compared to having only five carbons. That's a lot of hydrogen atoms. Let's consider the other situation in which maybe we have actually six carbon atoms, not five. And let's do that calculation as well. And let's kind of put a question mark here to see if that makes sense. 156 minus the mass of bromine minus the mass of six carbon atoms this time. And let's see what we get here. 156 minus 79 minus... 72. That gives us five hydrogen atoms. And our job now is to figure out which one of those molecular formulas makes the most sense. The two molecular formulas that we came up with were C5H17Br, or our other option was C6H5Br. Now, it's possible that you haven't had enough experience looking at molecular formulas. Um, you haven't had enough experience to know that this formula right here is actually impossible. There is going to be no possible way for us to jam 17 hydrogen atoms onto five carbon atoms. It just wouldn't work. If you tried to draw a structure that was consistent with this formula, it just 
wouldn't work. And because it's impossible, we know that this cannot be correct. I'm going to draw a line through this five because it can't be correct. I'm going to draw a line through this right here because it also cannot be correct. And the correct formula is C6H5Br. Now, if you're not comfortable um, looking at oops, looking at this formula and knowing that it's impossible, you could actually stay tuned for my next video where I am teaching you how to calculate HDI. The HDI calculation would um, used in conjunction with the rule of 13 would give, be another way that you could identify this C5H17Br as being an impossible formula.